Hello everyone and welcome to our course on Python programming. My name is Anish Karan and I will help you learn the fundamentals of Python programming and what programming in Python really means and what it is all about. I am sure there are plenty of you over here that are watching this video that have their own reasons and multiple reasons to start learning programming and programming in Python in particular. Our goal over the duration of this course is to ensure that you are able to learn Python and learn Python programming to a level in which you can tackle whatever problems you have and whatever projects you set out to do in the future. Now I'm sure you must have heard that the, some of the most upcoming fields and some of the high prospect domains in, in the market right now such as data science, AI, machine learning require Python programming and our goal in this course is to get you to a level where you can start tackling and creating solutions to uh, whatever problems you may occur whether it be in your job or in your studies or anywhere else or any personal projects that you may uh, take up in the future now before we actually get started on the actual concepts and the fundamentals of python i want to show you over the next two or three videos exactly what how python came to be what was the philosophy behind creating this language and uh, uh, basically a brief introduction behind uh, Python and Python programming. So Python programming was developed first by a person, a Dutch programmer by the name of Guido van Rossum and Python was first released by him in the year 1991. Now the design philosophy behind Python was to create a language which was much easier to read and much easier to actually code in compared to the uh, or in contrast to the languages that were prevalent back in those days, such as uh, the language C. Now, formally, Python is an interpreted high-level general purpose programming. And what this means is that uh, Python is a, it's a language that can be used for a wide variety of applications, as we will see later. Uh, the high-level uh, part of this definition basically tells us that Python is written in a language that is very abstract, at a much higher abstract level compared to the instructions that a computer can actually read. So in layman's term, you can say that Python is very close to the actual uh, language that we humans use. And that's the way Python has been designed. And the difference between a high level programming language and a low level programming language is that low level languages are essentially machine language instructions that are the actual instructions that a computer can actually understand. A high level language like Python is something that we humans understand better and we can write in it better. Now, the term interpreted over here uh, essentially means that we don't need to compile our instructions that we give in Python. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that the computers or any system that involves computing needs low level language to be fed to it so that the computer can actually understand because computers cannot understand the way we write our code. And this process of converting from high level to low level is called compilation. And in most languages such as C, there's a special process involved called compilation, which we do after we create our blocks of code or scripts or whatever. Now, when we say Python is an interpreted language, what this means is that we can actually work on Python and see the results right at the get go. We can skip this step of compilation uh, because our system that runs Python actually does all of that uh, conversion from high level to a low level uh, language as we type our code. And uh, this actually speedens up the process very well for us and makes uh, programming in Python uh, and other interpreted languages as well, much, much easier for us. Python is, of course, an open source language. It's uh, the most bare implementation of Python known as CPython is actually uh, even currently being maintained by a foundation known as the software, Python Software Foundation. So essentially, Python is being maintained, developed by a group of very talented developers. And it's it's open to pretty much anyone to work with and to create libraries for. This allows Python to be an amazing language in the in the modern world because in the modern world we have uh, different issues and different problems in different spheres and domains that we we would need uh, to update our libraries or update our packages that we use in our programming language on a very regular basis and so python being an open source language allows us to keep updating and keep up with the times essentially when it comes to solving problems now let's go over some of the features of python and these features are actually why it's considered 
that using Python is uh, advantageous over using other languages. So let's start with some of these points. Now, as we mentioned, Python is very, uh, it's a very readable program. Code readability is very important. It's one of the design philosophies behind this when it was being developed. It's very easy to learn, which is why Python is an entry point for many people that are just beginning to learn programming. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a high level language in Python. We, since Python is open source, as, as I had already mentioned, so it gets, it benefits from all the, the benefits you get from any open source technology. Now it's also portable. So what this means is that if we create a code in, in Python and we create it in a particular system, say on Windows, uh, we don't need to make any changes. If we wanted to use the same script or this, that same piece of code on some other system, say on a Linux system or uh, a Mac system, Python itself comes with a very large standard library. This this facilitates us uh, a lot because we don't need to uh, create our own libraries or modules or have to download very specific libraries. Most of the problems that we do encounter uh, quite commonly can already be solved by the standard libraries that have already been provided by the developers of Python right, right from the beginning. Now, later, later on during the course, we will uh, encounter what is the meaning of a data structure. A data structure is essentially uh, manipulation of a, if of an object of an object of data and um, as as you will see later uh, python has one of the most user friendly data structures uh, that can be found in any language uh, especially compared to some of its contemporaries now python is a dynamically programmed language and this is very important and what this means is that in most compiler based languages we there are certain processes that can only happen during the compilation stage so what a dynamic programming language does is it takes all those uh, compilation specific uh, tasks and processes and it, it does it for us as we actually type the code. So we don't need to waste time or spend extra time to do something that would otherwise be needed to be only done in compilation. We would have to set out specific uh, runtime just for that. Uh, so this allows us to create our programs and solutions much faster and allows us to debug much easier and uh, yeah so it's a it's it's a very important feature about python now quickly i will just go over some of the uh, areas of python where like areas of uh, or or different domains where python is very heavily implemented and the first one the first few ones that come to mind are like web development and um, are ai and machine learning so you have technologies like Django and Flask that are uh, built on top of Python that uh, are used extensively for web development. When it comes to something like artificial intelligence or machine learning, you have uh, distributions such as Anaconda, you have Pandas, and many other libraries like SciPy and NumPy that are used uh, extensively to sort of tackle problems in this domain. And similarly, Python finds use in most of the scientific work that goes on nowadays uh, because of, uh, again, some of the libraries that I have already mentioned, such as SciPy. Interestingly, if you are into game development or gaming in general, uh, you would see that Python actually has certain libraries and certain uh, technologies that facilitate game development very, very well. One very popular game, in, if in case you are into gaming, is a World of Tanks that is built on Python. Uh, some of the other applications are, of course, desktop, uh, creating desktop GUIs, image processing, graphic design applications, and uh, something that is very relevant to me and, of course, you as well, is uh, creation of education programs and training courses. Uh, there are many technologies in the environment of Python that um, were almost designed for the specific purpose of uh, being able to present certain concepts or to be able to uh, teach certain classes and... Uh, uh, I can't think of too many programs or too many environments outside of Python that are better to solve these uh, education and training course related um, problems and situations. All right. So now that we have, um, I have covered some of the brief, brief introductory topics around Python. Let's uh, talk about what we're going to see in the next video. Uh, we're going to actually, I'm going to show you how you can install some of these uh, implementations and distributions. I'm going to speak about them. I'm going to speak out the certain libraries and modules that they come with. And, uh, and I hope to see you there in the next video. Thank you for watching.